Breaking news. Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse is no more. I'm Gov Blacksburg, aka Wolf Financial. I'm here with Stock Market News. We're going to break this down for you and what it means for the banking world. Let's hop right into it, turning it over to you, Evan, to start us off. Yeah. So UBS has officially agreed to acquire Credit Suisse for more than $2 billion. And that is according to the Financial Times. As we dig into this a little bit more and explain to you everything that has happened, happening, make sure to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to whatever channel you're watching on if you do enjoy it. But on the next slide, you can see that Financial Times article that came out. They did agree to acquire them for around $2 billion. It was previously announced that it would be around $1 billion. So it is about double what UBS had originally wanted to do. It is going to be an all share offering. So no cash will be kind of thrown out there. And you, regulators want to kind of go over what would normally have to happen here. The UBS shareholders would have to approve the uh, the acquisition in a shareholder vote. But UBS, uh, sorry, financial regulators in Switzerland want to get around that. So we'll see if that leads to any problems. Well, if you want to lead us through a little bit more on the price at the bottom. Yeah, UBS will now pay more than uh, 50. These are going to be Swiss francs per uh, share in its own stock. So just to translate these three numbers at the bottom, uh, 50 cents of Swiss francs is going to translate into roughly 54 cents of US dollars. The 25 cent number that you see down there is going to translate into 27 cents of US dollars. And the dollar and 86 Swiss francs is going to translate into two dollars and one cents of US dollars. So that should cover everything that you're seeing at the bottom. So, we'll, of the slide. so yeah, Credit Suisse closed at two dollars and one cent. If you go and stack your check your stock chart before Monday's open. And what was that uh, 50 cent number? 54 cents, you said, right? Something about that in US states. Yes, exactly. So uh, Credit Suisse stock is going to open trading down 75 percent tomorrow, which will be very fascinating to watch. We'll see uh, what else uh, happens around that. I, I feel like that's just kind of the base start. We have an acquisition offer. That's the uh, the ceiling, you could say. We'll see what the floor is on that one. Uh, going over to the next slide, though, uh, there's a couple more stuff that is happening here. UBS has also agreed to soften uh, the material adverse clause, which would basically uh, let them kind of back out of the deal if anything does happen. Uh, I, I have a feeling when, when you kind of have this type of shotgun marriage, you uh, may figure out some stuff after. And uh, and yeah, so the Swiss government wants to kind of take in or take back what uh, could be considered in that area. Definitely fascinating to watch on that one. And they're also trying to, like I said earlier, circumvent what would normally be uh, a shareholder vote. The Swiss National Bank is offer also offering roughly a $100 billion liquidity line to UBS as a part of the deal that is quite a lot of money. UBS Bank, what, just got bought for $2 billion and they need a $100 billion liquidity line. And obviously the, the value of the bank and the assets they have are very different. But this is coming out of the Wall Street Journal and definitely something that uh, has to be watched. Well, yeah, Wolf, I don't know if there's any topics on, on kind of what we've covered so far, this deal and uh, how it's played out. Well, I thought this Saudi part of it was interesting. In fact, if you go to Credit Suisse's Twitter page, you can see that the last article that they retweeted was a CNBC article that said the Saudis say everybody is freaking out too much right here. And lo and behold, the Saudi National Bank owned 9.8% of Credit Suisse. They just lost a billion dollars with that sale. So I thought that that was interesting. That, that was actually the last piece up. But I think you covered it pretty well. Incredible that this is going to open up trading down 75%. Uh, I have no expectations for how the stock is going to move from that point. We know that these banks can move 25, 50, 100 percent on a daily basis in the current regime. So I think it keeps things interesting. Any thoughts on the Saudi nationals? So not too much more on the Saudi National Bank. We know a lot of this did kind of kickstart when they came out. Well, there was a lot of reasons behind it, but they came out and said they didn't want to give Credit Suisse more funding. They didn't want to jump over to uh, being a 10 percent plus more owner in the bank. And uh we're kind of seeing that they're losing a billion dollars, but maybe they just wanted to go in and cut their losses. They had about a $1.5 billion investment and uh, at the uh, 10% number that is worth uh, a lot less closer to 200 million. So you can see the difference there. I, I do think there's a little bit more on this Credit Suisse situation to talk about. You know, it's been known as a bank that's uh, been lackluster for a while, especially after 2008, but probably even before that. Uh, so uh, it's kind of crazy that Silicon Valley Bank 
uh, which has nothing really to do with it, is kind of what tipped us over the edge, this really kind of lack in confidence going across the banks. It was already there, but that really is what uh, caused it go uh, to go over the edge. So I wonder if there will be more fallout on that. Credit Suisse literally uh, is 167 years old. It was started in the mid-1800s. It, uh, it was started in 1856. That's before the light bulb. The uh, telephone, the car, the radio, the airplane. It was founded literally before the Civil War. So uh, a lot of history going under, and uh, we'll see. I wonder what this means for the rest of those banks. Uh, there's a list of the globally systemically important banks around the world, and Credit Suisse was considered to be one of those. So we'll see how that kind of whole area uh, develops itself and, and watch the market for this the rest of the week. I know we do have a couple other events going forward on the week. We do have a couple earnings coming up, not too, too many, but we do have Nike earnings and uh, GameStop earnings for all of those apes out there. So we'll, if you want to go over to that calendar really quickly. Yeah. But Real, uh, yeah. On the, on the credit suite side, I just had two other comments that I did want to share. One of them, because you were mentioning how does this affect other banks? Well, if you remember back in 2008, Bayer Stearns was actually acquired in that February, right? And then the big collapse arrived in the fall. So it'd be fair to say that Credit Suisse is potentially among the first of a series of victims. Uh, there could be more. Banks are in trouble right now. We just had massive QE for 10 years. Now we're getting higher rates, right? So it's well, pretty- Well, you know what, though? I don't necessarily I disagree, but also Credit Suisse has been known as a bad bank for a long time. And it seems like a lot of the problems here are suit. more around confidence. There's um, others yeah, that have yeah. been known as bad banks uh, that have been yeah, around. So we'll so. have to see on that one. We will see uh, what ends up affecting them. But yeah, I thought it was interesting to just look at that and say, you know, we're potentially not through the worst of it. I wouldn't think it would be fair to say we're through the worst of it at this point definitively. But like you said, we can move into some of these earnings. Well, for just the quickly on that, I, I would say uh, I don't know if you can even answer that question with all. I think that I personally think that we might be. Um, but to say that we're definitively not through the, the worst of it, I think is also you can definitely not know that for sure so we'll have to see how it develops i think the the big key there is that we don't really know how the impacts are going to come out everyone kind of has that 2008 theme in their head but uh not everything really works out like that one it's just that was the most recent example that we've had of this so um i am in the optimistic camp that this will be nothing like that but uh like you said no one can be definitive about that uh, Wolf, any last comments on that? And then maybe we go over to these earnings and uh, Jay Powell, which is coming this week. Yeah, nothing else on the Credit Suisse side of things. Just Perfect. interesting to finally see them get bought out and curious to see if there's more coming. Yeah, we'll see if this uh, takes over a year to get done, like the whole GameStop Activision deal. There's a lot more. One thing I've noticed on this bank stuff is, that, is when something happens, it happens very, very quickly. Like, yeah, they don't even let the weekend go by before they have an announcement. But enough on that. Going over to earnings. We do have Nike and GameStop. It's funny uh, saying Nike and GameStop in the same category, but we will quickly move by that. The uh, largest two names that most people are going to care about this week. Nike is expected to report at 4.15 p.m. on Eastern after the close on Tuesday. Wall Street is expecting EPS of 51 cents and then revenue of $11.45 billion. And then Wall Street is expecting for GameStop to release their numbers at 4.05 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday after the close. They want EPS of negative 16 cents and then revenue of $2.18 billion. So two names to definitely keep on your radar this week. And they actually happen the day before the biggest event of this week. Everyone will 100% be, well, maybe they're the biggest event might be the fallout on Monday. But everyone will be watching Jerome Powell and the FOMC on Wednesday. So that FOMC meeting where they're going to either uh, announce that they're going to raise like 25 basis points, uh, 50 feels like off the table, uh, but maybe they even keep rates unchanged. That will be at Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. They're going to make that announcement and it will be followed by a Jerome Powell press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, just really quickly before I throw it over to you, Wolf, to uh, if you have any thoughts on this, it is really important. I think this one will be more important than normal that the market might go one way when we get that rate hike decision uh, and it can go a completely different way when Jerome Powell starts speaking. That, that has kind of been the trend. So I, I would definitely watch out for that. If we really get a big pump uh, off the decision, we might get Powell coming to walk us back and vice versa on that one. So definitely watch out for that. But Wolf, anything standing out to you on the, the macro calendar? 
Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that statement about Fed Chair Powell coming in and potentially turning the initial move on its head. That has been a reoccurring theme for a couple of years now. And especially with this one, if they do only do a 25 point basis hike or they do a zero uh, basis points uh, movement, I do believe that he would come in and still reaffirm the Fed's commitment to bring the inflation down to the 2% level, right? Ultimately, that is the goal. They would have to walk the tightrope a little carefully because of the banking situation, but that's where they are headed and they're on a mission to get there. In regards to the earnings that we had looked at, like you said, there's nothing too major, but Nike, GameStop, these are ones that are going to get attention. Chewy's typically a big mover. And I always love finding out that new companies uh, that I didn't know are publicly traded are publicly traded, like a fact set, seeing that that's publicly traded and some of these others on here. So it's just always something that's interesting to look at. But I think you're spot on with the economic calendar and then more of those initial jobless claims, more of the durable good claims and some of those other pieces which are continuing to come through. And like you said, that Fed meeting is going to be so interesting. We're going to be live for that on Twitter spaces. So if anybody doesn't already check us out on Twitter, we'll put links into the description of these videos. So you can come and listen in live with us and we'll actually be uh, announcing the news live, streaming Fed Chair Powell's speech and trading it live as well. I think we had one other piece we wanted to go over here, which is the blackout period, right? Yeah, so this is really cool. I want to put this back on everyone's radar. We know Fed presidents speaking all day, every day is kind of a theme of the market over the last couple of years at this point, I guess. And oddly enough, the second the uh, proverbial shit hits the fan, uh, they cannot speak. So we are going to see a, a lot of the Fed presidents speaking this upcoming week after that blackout period. So have that on watch. Um, and, and yeah, so that is Thursday. I, I would expect at least 20 to 30 of them go in there the rest of this week and then into the week after that. So keep that on watch. And uh, I think that is pretty good for me. Monday's open is going to be crazy. We have an insane week ahead. Myself and Wolf definitely plan on doing more and more of these videos. So uh, if you enjoy them, make sure you subscribe to our channels, leave a like, and uh, we appreciate you. Anything else you want to leave people with, Wolf? Yeah, I think sometime during this week when we have a little bit more details, perhaps we could put together a credit suite full on breakdown, uh, showing where maybe some of those assets are going, showing the integration, how long it's going to take. Um, this is very likely a multi-year process, especially for some of the employees that are involved. So I think it'll be you know prudent to continue to keep up with the developing situation. We wanted to get a video out today as the news just broke within the last hour. Uh, but yeah, that's everything for me. One more time. Uh, we really appreciate you all coming and you know, watching these videos, liking these videos, subscribing to the channel. It's very uh, rewarding, obviously, to see our channels grow as we put in daily effort to put out new videos. So we appreciate you all for doing it here with us. And with that, we'll see you in the next one.